Hello, you wonderful people. In this video, we're going to take a look how to use a register function in Strapi to customize your Strapi application. We're going to look at two different methods. The first one is using the register function directly in your Strapi application. And the second, how you could encapsulate all that logic using plugins. And the benefit of using a plugin is you could create a plugin with all the encapsulated logic and if you need to add it to another application, you could just install that plugin. And if you want to remove that functionality, you could just disable that plugin. And this is based on an article written by Bogey, and I helped to create some of the examples that you're going to see here with his help. And so without any further ado, we're going to get started with the video. So there are many ways that you could customize Strapi. And one of the ways you could do it programmatically. Inside our Strapi project in the source folder, we have a file called index.ts that has the register function and the bootstrap function. Register function will run on startup and the bootstrap function will run when the application starts. Today, we're going to take a look at the register function. What's awesome, as we'll see in this video, you could access different parts of Strapi programmatically inside the register function and add additional methods. Like in this case, we're going to walk through a quick example of how to adding a middleware in the register function. You could learn about all the different places where we store all the different items in Strapi by looking at the blog post, but I'm gonna show you a quick tip that you could use if you wanna explore the Strapi API yourself. So we're going to start by creating a Strapi project. I'm gonna go ahead and run npx create Strapi app at latest, call it my Strapi app. It's gonna go ahead and do its magic. Let's skip the login and yes for SQLite database. Do we want sample data? No and start with TypeScript, of course, install dependency, yes, initialize GitHub, I'm gonna say no. Once everything is installed, let's CD into our Strapi project and run yarn develop to start it up. Go ahead and create your first admin user and make sure that you do a very secure password like monkey1234 and click let's start it. And for example, let's go ahead into our content type builder and create a new collection type we're going to call it special, continue, and we're just going to have a simple text field called title and click finish. Let's click save. And once everything is done, we now have a collection type special, which has a route that has been created. We could actually go into our users roles and permission. If you click on public, you're going to see that we have this route available. Let's go ahead and enable select all and click save. So that way we could actually hit this endpoint. So taking a look at the blog post in Strapi, you could access various methods from Strapi from the Strapi object. Things like having access to the plugin, middlewares, policies, services, content types, components, configuration, and cron job. We're going to start with a basic example where we're going to take a look how we could programmatically add a middleware. But before we do that, if you want to explore the API, I wanna show you how you can do it. So in my terminal, I'm gonna stop my server, clear my screen, and you could actually start Strapi in console interactive mode by running yarn Strapi console. And now if you type Strapi and press enter, you're going to see a big printout of all the different things that are available to you. And what's awesome, you could inject things inside different items programmatically by using the Strapi object. We could also take a look at the different APIs that are available. If I do strapi.apis and click enter, we're going to see that currently we have our special collection type that's available to us. And if we do apis.special.middlewares, you're going to see that we have an empty object. And what we could actually do is programmatically go ahead and add our middleware. So let's do that now. If you want to find the name for the middleware that you just created, you could run yarn strappy console. And you could do strappy.middlewares, click enter. And if you scroll up here, you could see that we have our global middleware that we created. I'm going to go ahead and save it as a const middleware equals the middleware ID that we have. Now we want to get the route path to where we want to inject our middleware. 
And again, if I copy Strapi API special routes, special routes. So let me start yarn Strapi console. And if we type Strapi dot APIs, you're going to see all the different APIs available. We only have one special, so we could dig into it. So if we do special, you could see that we have access to all of these different objects. We want to take a look at dot routes. And we're going to see that we have our object with the routes. So if you do special dot dot routes, this is where we're going to see all the different routes that we have available. And let's say if we want to add our middleware to our get route. So let's see how we could do that. So we're going to get our register index, which is going to take our route path and it's going to find our special routes with a method get. Now that we have our register index, we are going to go ahead and get the route that we want. And we're going to check if middlewares is undefined. Let's add the middlewares with an empty array. And now what we could do, we could push our middleware into that new array by doing register route.config.middlewares push. And what this is going to do on startup, it's going to take our middleware that we created, which is our global middleware, and it's going to go ahead, push it to the middlewares. So let's restart our application. So now if I dig into the strappy routes, let's take a look at the first item in config. And notice that we see our middleware that we programmatically added. So now if I were to use Postman to make a request to our Strapi endpoint, which is specials, get request. When I click send, notice that we have custom middleware executed and that's coming from our middleware that we just created. Now that we know our basic implementation of how you could use register function to add additional code or functionality to your project, let's take a look how we could accomplish the same thing, but using a plugin instead. And the reason why that's beneficial, you encapsulate all that logic in the plugin and you could easily add it or remove it from your projects. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And instead, I'm going to show you how we could accomplish the same thing using the plugin. We're going to start by creating our first plugin using the Strapi plugin SDK. So starting my terminal, I'm going to go ahead and paste the command. This is going to initialize my plugin. It's going to ask us some questions. I'm going to call it my plugin, call it my plugin, really original plugin description, my cool plugin and plugin author name, Paul, plugin author email, paul.bratslavsky at strapi.io, get URL. I don't have one yet. MIT register with admin. Yes. And register with server, yes. Use edit config, sure. ESLint, yes. Use Prettier, of course. TypeScript, definitely. And this is going to go ahead and create your plugin. Once our plugin is created, we have to make sure that we add it to our configuration. So go ahead and copy this snippet here. And inside VS Code, navigate to config folder. And inside plugins, go ahead and paste in that snippet. Basically, we're saying, Hey, my plugin, that's the name of it. Let's enable it. And this is where it's found. Because we're using TypeScript, a good practice is to make sure that you uh, rebuild your plugin after every changes. And one of the things that I would recommend is using the watch command. So here in my terminal, I'm going to open up a second pane and I'm going to CD into source, plugins, my plugin. And first we're going to do yarn build. That's going to go ahead and build our plugin. But you could also run it in watch mode where you don't have to rebuild it after every change and it does it automatically. So you could literally run yarn watch. Now that we have our plugin, I'm going to run yarn develop to restart our Strapi application. And after we start our application, you're going to see that we have our plugin, which is pretty awesome. Now we could do similar things we did inside our Strapi app, but we could do them inside our plugin. So let's quickly take a look at the anatomy of the plugin. And in our Strapi project, you could navigate to source. In the plugin folder, you're going to see your plugin. Our plugin is broken down into our front end, which is the admin, and the server, which is our back end. Today, we're going to take a look how to extend our plugin via the register function, which is found in the server folder. And if we scroll down, you're going to see inside the source folder, we have our 
register function. And we're able to do similar things that we just did in our previous example, but we're doing it directly in our plugin, which is awesome because now you encapsulating your, your logic in a plugin that you could share with any other Strapi app that you're building rather than just having it inside your core Strapi application. So to help us along the way, we're just gonna go ahead and work through these snippets. I'm gonna go ahead and copy my middleware uh, snippet for our plugin middleware, which is the same as we did before. And inside our server source folder, we're gonna create a new file called middleware. And inside we're going to add our custom plugin middleware. And if the folder already exists, I think it becomes with default, that's it right there. So if it's not there, you could create it. If it is there, you could just go ahead and open it. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it custom plugin middleware.ts. And we're going to add our snippet. And now let's go to our index.js file. Let's go ahead and export it. Now that we have our custom plugin middleware, we could use it inside our register function. To make our code more cleaner inside source, we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it utils. And inside here, we're going to create a file called new file index.ts. And inside here, we're going to create a function called register document middleware. And it's following that similar pattern that we saw earlier. We find the middleware that we want to inject. We want to find the route. We're going to inject it to the same route path. This code is exactly the same as we had before, except now it's happening in our middleware. Now that we have our register document middleware function, we could go back to our register file, import it from our utils folder, and then use it. And now because we're running our plugin in watch mode, it should rebuild everything automatically. So now let's navigate back to our Postman instance. Let's click send. And here you could see boom, in our console log, custom plugin middleware executed. So now this middleware is coming from our plugin. What's interesting, if I go to config in our plugin.ts file and I remove this plugin once our application rebuilds and I try to make that same request, Norse, nothing happens. And this is one of the powers of putting your code in a plugin because you are able to easily encapsulate your code which allows you to have it in more modular way where you're able to easily add additional logic via plugins to your application. So notice now I pointed back to our plugin. If we go back and click send, notice that we see our custom plugin middleware is executed. Now, the last thing we're gonna take a look at this video is how to add a new component programmatically to an existing collection. For instance, in our Strapi application, we have this special collection type. And if you take a look at the fields, if you look in our content type builder, our special collection only has the title. But why if I wanna add an additional component and inject it directly into this collection type and I wanna do it programmatically via plugin. So that's what we're gonna take a look at next and always make sure that you have this article available to you in the description, so use it as reference. We also have, following the similar pattern, how to inject a cron job, but I'm gonna leave that for you to take a look in the article so to not to keep this video from getting super long. So instead, we're just gonna take a look at how to create a new component programmatically. We're going to, inside a source, create a new folder called components and a file called quotes.ts. And we're going to paste in this object that looks very similar to a schema of what the component should look like because that's exactly what this is. So inside our plugin, inside the server folder in the source, let's create a new folder called components. And inside here, create a new file called quote.ts and paste in our code snippet. And this is the schema for our object and we are already exporting it. Inside of our utils folder, inside the index file, let's go ahead and import our quote component. And we're going to create a new function that's going to be called register component. And what we're doing is we're going to say in Strapi components, where we store our components, we're going to create a new component inside a custom folder called quote, and it's going to be our quote component that we created. We're going to get the attributes object from our special content type, and we're also going to get the schema attributes. We're going to create our custom component reference with the type component. It's not repeatable, it's our custom quote, and we need to add that component reference both in our attributes 
and schema object. And once we do that, don't forget to export your component. Now that we have this register component function, let's navigate back to our register function and import our register component function and use it. Now, since our application is running, our Stripe instance is going to restart. And here's the cool part. If we go back to our front end and refresh, and once everything restarts, you could see that we took our component that we created and we ejected it inside of our special collection type. What's awesome, this component was created programmatically via our plugin. And just like I showed before, if I go back to my project inside the config folder and I go ahead and I decide to remove my plugin after my application rebuilds, notice that component is gone. If I go ahead and enable my plugin and after my application restarts, notice that you see our custom field. And again, I want to make this quick video, but definitely use the blog post as a reference and use it as many times as necessary. And the last example that we have here, which is we following that similar pattern is adding a cron job. The first thing we do is we create a cron job. Second, we create that register cron job function where we basically able to access the server config where we able to inject a cron job. We check if there's tasks, if it's undefined, go ahead and create an empty object where we able to add the new cron job and we follow that sem similar pattern where we take that register cron job function and call it in our register file. So in this video, we went ahead and took a look how you could customize your Strapi application programmatically, not only to do it inside the core project, but how you can make your code more modular by making these customizations via plugin. And what's awesome, as you saw with plugins, is that you could easily add the plugin to add the functionality or remove the plugin to take that functionality away. If you have any questions, you could always visit us Monday through Friday on our Discord open office hours that we hold Monday through Friday, 12.30 p.m. CST time, where Derek and I and other members of our community hang out and talk everything about Strappy and sometimes other things. But with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.